Hey, hey, hello, welcome! Yes, I am 100% addicted. <laughs> Excited! I thought you said addicted. <laughs> See? <laughs> Congratulations to Can Man Man. I'm claiming first. Yay! Hello, everyone. I fixed the YouTube streaming this time. Good job, me. <laughs> More Shadow Slave. It is Shadow Slave Tuesday after all, so I will try. I'll try my best. Oh, now the thingy went crazy. Can't wait for upcoming chapters. <gasps> me neither. Or do you mean release chapters? I'm not really there yet, but. <laughs> well, no, upcoming chapters, yes. All chapters are good. Don't spoil me, please. Yes, everything is nice and good. And we will read more today. Both. Nice. <laughs> okay, here is it. Here is text. Yes. Everything Shadow Slave is hype. Yes. Agree. <laughs> agreed, agreed, agreed. Last time was yesterday. I should be able to remember what happened yesterday. Um, <laughs> but um, um, he jumped down from the tower 
and endured the crushing. Mm. Then he went back to the real world, met up with Effie and Kai. Effie started living in his house, <laughs> worried. Um, they talked. <laughs> There is apparently a movie being made about the Forgotten Shore, which is hype as fuck, and I want to read slash see it now, please. Hopefully today we will. I'm so fucking excited. Um, then he went back and the White Feather Clan guys wanted to speak with him. St. Tyrus and Master Rowan. I remember names. <laughs> we had a little lunching. And it wasn't that bad. And they said that they just wanted to uh, leave Sunny a message from Cassie. Which was a place that I've forgotten the name of. And um, then St. Tyrus was like, I know about the mirror beast. And we were like, okay. <laughs> and then we left. <laughs> um, and now Sonny's on his way to meeting Cassie. And at the end, he just saw Cassie. And she spoke her first words. And now here we are. Hello, Levi. So now here we are. Cassie. <gasps> We're meeting Cassie. Amazing. Hmm. Okay. Let's go. I am super excited. Oh. Okay. Chapter 470. Come winter. Cassie had changed since the last time they met. Her hair was longer, and there was a strange silver half-mask covering her eyes, its surface blind and intricately engraved. It matched the polished steel of the armor she was wearing on top of a midnight blue coat, comprised of a short cuirass, cuirass? van braces, greaves, and a segmented pauldron. The quiet dancer hung on her belt, but there was also a long dagger opposite it, its guard twisting upward. What changed most of all, however, was her demeanor. The blind girl seemed much older, somehow. Firmer, poised, but also wary. As if pressed down upon by the weight of years. What? What years? She's younger than me! <laughs> she is? <laughs> I thought they were all the same age. Maybe they're not. No, they're not. I don't know their age. I, I thought Effie and... Kai were older. I guess it's just because they were already in the dream realm, so... And then... Since... It's because of... Like, the the school fucked me up. Because it's like, they get there when they get their first nightmare. But then it's like, no, because they were in the same year. And I'm like, no, that's not how it worked. <laughs> that's not how that school works. Um... Okay, so Cassie youngest, Sunny middle, Nephis oldest. Got it. But Kai and Effie are older than both. Oh, I'm both. But all three of them, right? Like Kef Kefi. <laughs> Kai and Effie are older. Yes, thank you. It doesn't really matter that much. Six and twelve months younger than Sunny. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Sunny struggled a little, then pretended to smile too, for the benefit of the young firekeeper who no doubt expected a warm re reunion. No one knew what had happened between them after all. Yeah, I received your notes, cryptic as it was, and here I am, in the flesh. The girl who had led him to Cassie glanced at them, then made an excuse and went back to the camp tactfully deciding to remove herself from what she thought was going to be an emotional meeting of two old friends. 
I wonder how oh, this, is this gonna be super awkward? Is he, he gonna scream at her? Will she cry? <laughs> she will probably be like, I've seen things. Former friends, really. <laughs> the stab at the heart. My heart. <laughs> Sunny hesitated a little, then asked. So, how have you been? Cassie sighed, then turned back to the ex excavated roots of the shard tree. Uh, oh, that's okay. So it's not a toilet. It was <laughs> there was a hole because of roots. <laughs> Got it. Now we know. After a while, she spoke. Not so good, actually. Her voice sounded distant. We we have tried to venture into the Hollow Mountains, as you must know, but it was hopeless. That place is pure death for anyone who dares to set foot into the mist. We hoped to find a way back to the Forgotten Shore. In the end, however, we were lucky to simply escape alive. Cassie remained silent for a bit and asked, What about you? Sunny grinned. Me? Oh, I've never been better. With that, he summoned the covetous coffer, fished out some fresh, fragrant fruit from it, and sat down on a nearby stump. Taking a big bite out of a juicy peach, he shooed it with gusto, and then glanced at the blind girl. Oh, sorry. I only brought enough for one. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> I know. I know. What she did. It's fucked up. But you don't. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you don't have to be a bitch back. <laughs> he's so petty. <laughs> oh, he's only doing this to be... Yes. Sunny knew that he was being ridiculously petty. Ah! <laughs> but so what? Pettiness was his middle name, figuratively speaking. So, you failed to return to the Forgotten Shore, and now, what are you doing, exactly? Why are you digging up trees in, the, in this vile forest? Cassie smiled a little, then answered evenly. I am looking for something. Then she turned away from the hole and faced him. Yes, I told the white, the white, oh, the white feather clan that you will return alive. No, I did not see a vision of where you were and what you did in the past months. Sunny stared at her with a dark expression. What is this? She can read minds now? And no, I can't read minds. What the fuck? If you must know, my second ability allows me to sense what will happen in the next few seconds. What the hell, okay? That's why I can walk around without a cane. And knew what you were going to say. That's crazy. <laughs> can she come back? <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Holy... He grimaced. That's going to be very annoying, I think. Well, that too, but still, crazy. Sunny looked at Cassie, reevaluating her armor and weapons. With an ability, with an ability like that, she might have become a very formidable fighter, or not. He didn't really understand how it worked, to tell the truth. So he asked curiously. Does that mean that you can see now? Cassie shook her head. No, not exactly. But if I want to take a step forward and sense falling into a ravine, I can walk around it instead. If I sense being pierced by a sword, I can try to deflect it. And if I sense being asked a question, I can answer it. He thought for a bit and then said, So what is my next question? Oh, <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> the blind girl simply shook her head. I don't need to waste soul essence to guess. You want to know how I knew that you will come back to the sanctuary in one piece. Sunny finished his fruit, threw the pit into the hole, then smiled. Indeed. If you did not spy on my recent adventures, then how did you know that I wasn't going to die? Cassie lingered for a bit, then turned away. After a while, she said, It's still spring. Ugh. He scowled. What does that have to do with anything? You knew that I would be fine because it's spring? Cassie smiled. Yes, 
I know that you I knew that you wouldn't die because you see you will die in the winter or what she paused for a moment and then said calmly I already saw you die in winter I mean <laughs> I'm just saying hello <laughs> Both of us, actually. Okay, this is extremely interesting, but it's like, I, I see. <laughs> Not that it was like, wow, big mystery solved right there. Hi, shouldn't you be asleep, JP? How are you feeling? <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> I call pre-read, bitch, I call writer. <laughs> Can't die now if I see us die later. <laughs> yeah. I tried and failed. Okay, I see. I see then. Then Shadow Slave might help you fall asleep. Probably not. It would be the opposite, really. <sighs> okay, so they will die. Uh, interesting, I guess. Very, um... But that won't happen, so... Or they will, but they will get revived or some shit. I don't... I'm this, okay. After Cassie dropped that bomb, Sonny simply stared at her for a whole minute. His eyes wide and the words refusing to come out of his mouth. Finally, he gritted his teeth and hissed. What the hell? You saw us die? Cassie sighed, then gave him a simple nod. Yes. <laughs> or Kai becomes the main character. <laughs> yes, Kai and Effie Adventures. Sunny growled. Elaborate. The blind girl hesitated for a little while, then asked evenly. Are you sure you want to know? You've seen what happened the last time I shared my vision with someone and tried to challenge fate. A dark, resentful expression appeared on Sunny's face. With his voice full of anger, he spat. Who cares? Tell me what you saw this instant. I mean, if he's gonna die anyway, it doesn't really matter, right? Then she can, she might as well tell him. Cassie sighed and turned to face him. All right, but remember. Remember what happened to the three of us before. How we tried to deceive fate, but were played by fate instead. She grew quiet for a moment and then said, This is what I saw. There was a crumbling island falling into the sky below, and the two of us, bloodied, mangled and weak, falling down with it. It was snowing. Above us, a giant bird flew, wreathed in thunderclouds. It was fighting a terrifying black wyvern, their blood falling down like rain. Then the darkness swallowed us, and we were gone. Cassie looked down, then added solemnly, That was how he died. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds ominous. Just a bit, just a bit. It was snowing. Mm hmm. Mm, okay. Interesting, interesting. The the thunderclouds. Was that is that um Italian Christmas? <laughs> yes. Totally. Um cuz there was something recently with the storm god, right? Or was that what they... Mm. Mm. Cause in my head I was like, wait, the, the thundercloud, oh, that's St. Tyrus. And I was like, wait, why did I think about, why did I think that? No, it's not, right? <laughs> Cause it's like giant bird. Master Owen's bird. 
Storm God? I don't know what I'm saying. But because the, they're the different gods, right? And they are like, oh, they have different names, but they have all like they have their names, but then it's like also like the runes read like 300 fucking different words. Like this is, can also be the god of me or the god of me or whatever. So I forget which what they're not actually like what they're called. Mm. <laughs> or if it was something in the in the sky below like in the um, the obsidian tower not obsidian but the the dark tower basically if there was a um, wasn't there a statue of one of the gods or depicting one of the gods or some shit wasn't that one of them maybe mm. Mm, okay. <laughs> Weather wind vibes. Bird lady. Mm. And she also had a bird, did you not? Mm. Okay. Done. Continuing. Chapter 471. Quid pro quo. When Cassie was done speaking, Sunny remained silent for a bit. Then he said, Anything else? More details? The blind girl shook her head. Because of the blizzard, it was hard to see what surrounded the crumbling island, and it was already too damaged to recognize it. So, no. No more details. Uh, you were wearing a metal armor, I think. Not the puppeteer's shroud. Sunny massaged his temples with a bleak expression on his face. Well, it's not as bad as he expected. Cassie tilted her head a little. It's not? A dark smile appeared on his lips. We already know that your visions are easy to misinterpret. You haven't seen us die, really, right? The light go out of our eyes, our bodies being torn apart, and so on. You just saw us badly injured and falling into the darkness. So what? I've already fallen into the sky below once, and here I am, good as new. The blind girl hesitated. You fell into the sky below? <laughs> Yes. Sunny waved a hand dismissively. Yes, but that doesn't matter. Wait, no, actually, it does matter. It's the reason I came to see you. I have almost forgotten because of this. Charming revelation of yours. After that, he grew silent, thinking about Cassie's vision of their death. Despite Sunny's bravado inside, inside, he wasn't as nonchalant about it as he wanted to appear. Yes, her visions had been misleading in the past, but not all of them. Some were as straightforward as possible. And yes, although he had already gone through the endless void below the Shained Isles once, there was no guarantee that he would survive it the second time, not unless he had chosen to do so himself. After the Twisted Rock was destroyed by the crushing, Sunny managed to survive due to, th due to three reasons. One of them was Mordred. One was that he had already been near the, been near the tear. And the other was the where is my eye enchantment that he had used in a moment of desperation. That enchantment had almost killed him itself, and only failed to do so because his already exhausted shadow essence ran out just at the right time. If his reserves had not been depleted, and he was forced to, do, forced to endure staring into the eternity of fate for a few seconds more, his mind would have been destroyed completely. If he was thrown into the sky below once more, away from the tear, there would be a very slim chance of him finding the rift in the ocean of divine flames again, especially if he was as badly wounded as Cassie imp implied. And there were giant birds fighting wyverns in the sky above. Giant birds fighting wyverns. What exactly is a wyvern? Because I'm just thinking about the dragons. <laughs> It is a dragon, okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Dragon, I see. Well then. Dragons with two paws. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. 
scenario. Dragons must have four paws to be a dragon. What the f- I didn't know this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I learned something today. <laughs> hmm. So what they had to do now was, well, what the hell was he supposed to do? The vision did not provide any actionable uh, information. The only thing Sunny could think of was to work really hard to get himself a flight-capable memory or echo before winter. And maybe make a will. He sighed. So, what have you been doing to prevent the two of us from dying? How can you calmly dig around in the mud, knowing that is going to happen? <laughs> knowing what is going to happen? <laughs> this, this bitch <laughs> like digging around in the mud oh dude Cassie lingered for a moment and smiled in fact I am digging around in the mud for that very reason Sunny snorted what are you hoping to find there a pair of wings she shook her head no I'm just hoping to find a preserved root. A root. What can a root do to save us from dying? Potions? He kept quiet for a bit and said, All right, suit yourself. Anyway, I wanted to talk with you about something. Cass looked into the depths of the forest, then nodded. About what? Sonny gathered his thoughts, then explained. Cassie's going to save the future making mud pies. Yay! <laughs> a mud castle. I have found a nightmare seed. A very special one. That contains a very special second nightmare. And I want to challenge it after the winter solstice, actually. Scratch that, I want to challenge it by the end of the autumn. <laughs> his initial plan was to give himself and his companions seven months to prepare. But considering what Cassie saw happening in winter, these plans had to change. Whatever it was that she predicted, facing it as a master would be much more desirable than facing it as an awakened. Unless her vision took place inside the nightmare, of course. Ah, Interesting. And it doesn't matter if he's a master or an awakened, like, the vision has already said they're gonna be fucked up. Of course it's, like... Of course, it's better if he's stronger, but it's like, you're still gonna get fucked up. <laughs> but yes, I get it. Regardless, now, he decided to return to the ivory tower before the autumn was over. Six months was a tight amount of time to get ready, but not so different from his initial plan. He could make it work, provided, the other pe provided that other people whom he wanted to make to take with him would too. That seed is also located in a very special place. In fact, it's right above our heads, in the ivory tower. <clears throat> I found a way to get there without being killed by the crushing. Although that other path is arguably just as dangerous. Sunny pointed down. It's in the sky below. Effie and Kai are coming to the Shane Alice to join me. We hope that you will challenge the nightmare with us, too. Oh, and we'll need your help getting into the night temple. There's an item we need to retrieve there. Cassie faced him and remained silent for a while. With her eyes being hidden by a mask and her face unmoving, it was hard to tell what she was feeling or thinking about. Mm. I mean, then wouldn't the vision just as well be like when they're falling into the sky below because they want to get to the nightmare <laughs> oh but it had to be winter right or snow it had to be snow no winter and maybe the snow isn't actually snow maybe it's something else who knows finally she said you want me to join? After what I have done to you? Unseen to her, a cold expression appeared on Sonny's face. He looked at the blind girl for a long time, then shrugged. Why not? We don't have to be friends to go into a nightmare together. We don't even need to like each other. We can just be temporary allies. Wasn't that what I was to you anyway? <sighs> Ugh. 
If you can handle that, so can I. I don't mind being used, as long as I get to use you in return. Pretty simple. Damn. <laughs> we just sacrificed. No! <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, fair, but... <sighs> Cassie turned away and didn't say anything for a few moments. Then she answered. All right. I will go to the Night Temple with you and help you conquer the second nightmare. But I want your help with something in return. <laughs> what? Now that she's gonna go back and forth, back and forth. Okay, but then I need, like, <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Sunny raised an eyebrow. My help? With what? The blind girl hesitated for a second and then said, You have been to the Shipwreck Island, haven't you? The creature that dwells there. In a few months, I want you to help me kill it. Oh, this is just like Sunny. Like, he's like, I want you to, to kill the knight. And now she's like, Okay, I will help you if you kill this thing. I wonder why. Hmm. What did it do? What will it do? Okay. Using Cassie. Yeah, I didn't want to go too deep into that, but it's it's too early in the stream for that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Chapter 472. Worthy reward. Sunny stared at the blind girl with surprise, clearly written on his face. Allowing the surprise to seep into his voice, he asked. The vine creature? You want to kill that thing? Why would you want to attempt to do something that dangerous? Cassie nodded. Yes. He shook his head. <laughs> oh, drink. <laughs> that bastard sprawls through the entire island. Its vines buried underground. It is corrupted, which means that our weapons will barely be able to cut it. And if that was not bad enough, the vines produce clouds of deadly poison. Are you sure that you want to attack it? The blind girl lingered for a few moments, then answered calmly. It is a corrupted monster, indeed. It is terrifying and lethal, yes. But I am sure that we can destroy it, with enough preparation. Everyone has weaknesses, after all. That creature is suspect susceptible to fire, for example. There must be other things we might be able to exploit, too. Sunny thought for a while, then shrugged. Fine. I will help your cohort fight the monstrosity on the shipwreck island. I will not promise that we will succeed, though. Cassie sighed. Then we have a deal. My cohort and I will remain in the desecrated grove until our business here is done. I expect it to take a month, at least. Maybe more. After, we will return to the sanctuary, recuperate, and proceed to the shipwreck island. She paused for a moment and then added, And then, I will help you challenge the second nightmare. Sunny smiled. If we don't die before that, you mean? The blind girl turned back to the roots of the dead tree. Yes, if we don't die before that. <gasps> James! Holy shit, I finally made a small strum pog bones. <laughs> a strum! <laughs> Hello, welcome, James. Thank you so much for the sub. Thank you. Welcome. Yay! It's been so long. I hope you've been doing well. Hello. <laughs> Non-stop work grind. Oh, I see, I see. Respectable, respectable. <laughs> On his way back to the sanctuary, Sunny had a lot to think about. Firstly, there was the fact that he would have to co cooperate with Cassie again, which made him feel all sorts of complicated emotions. <laughs> the manner of their relationship, at least, was set clear. It was purely an alliance of convenience and nothing else. 
he could put away his resentment for the sake of mutual 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 <laughs> benefit. After all, Sonny could be a very pragmatic person when he needed to be. Secondly, there was the perspective of returning to the wreck of the ancient ship, this time to do battle with the vine monster that ruled over the island. Sonny knew very well how dangerous that thing was, so he had a lot of preparations to do if he wanted to come out of that fight in one piece. The divine flame augmentation of the cruel sight, however, was going to come in very handy. And lastly, there was the ominous prediction that the Cassie had made about both of them dying sometime in winter, or falling into the sky below, at least. That, he didn't even know what to think about that. However, Sonny was not going to let this vision affect his decisions. The last time he had tried to act on the knowledge received through Cassie's prof prof prophetic gift did not end well for him, or anyone, for that matter. The best thing to do was to keep it in his mind, but continue to act as if nothing had changed. At least he thought that this was the best course. Probably. Tired and mentally exhausted from the long journey to and back from the desecrated grove, Sunny approached the sanctuary of Noctis in the middle of the night. His shadow essence reserved were almost depleted, and his head bust from all the thoughts swarming inside of it. Landing on the soft grass and hearing the familiar sound of water falling over the edge of the island, Sonny gritted his teeth. Forget about it for now. First things first. The moon was high in the sky, which meant that he was finally going to get his sweet, enchanting reward. His desire to find the source of the miraculous coins the dead Shane Worm had brought with it to the Iron Hand Island started this whole ordeal, and now the coins would be its end. His prize was waiting for him up ahead. Entering the sanctuary, Sonny walked through the empty garden and approached the clear pond in its center, stopping for a couple of moments to make sure that no one was watching him. He then crossed a stone path leading to the small island in its center. There, a white altar stood in the shade of an ancient tree, and an obsidian knife lay on its surface. The moment of truth. Sonny summoned the covetous coffer, took out one of the gold coins out of it and placed it on the altar. The coin shimmered, reflecting the moonlight, and then disappeared. Your shadow grows stronger. Oh, bliss. A big smile appeared on Sonny's face. Mine too. <laughs> Summoning the runes, he read. Shadow fragments. 224 out of 2,000. It works! Initially, Sonny thought of going about using the coins in a slow and deliberate manner, throwing a dozen or so on the altar each time he had to return to the real world, to minimize the chances of being noticed and well as arising suspicion. But now that the reward was in his sight, he decided against it. No, he wanted all of it. Right now. <laughs> he deserved it. Putting the wooden box on the altar, he turned it to the side and then put his hand inside. A moment later, a stream of golden coins flowed onto the white surface. Then they all started to disappear. Your shadow grows stronger. Your shadow grows stronger. Your shadow grows stronger. <laughs> Yay! Get that knife. Get that knife. Shadow strength. I wonder how many he, he, he will get. In the end, Sunny ended up sacrificing all 1,400 or so coins to the altar. 1400. What? Frightened to believe that it actually happened, he summoned the runes again, then rubbed his eyes and read the line describing his shadow fragments three times in a row, just to make sure that his eyes weren't deceiving to him. Luckily, they weren't. The runes now showed shadow fragments 1657 out of 2000. I did it. I did it. In the first two months on the Shane Owls, Sonny worked really hard to hunt down nightmare creatures and slay them, and yet he had only been able to collect 200 fragments. His last journey, harrowing as it had been though, gave him so much more. A wide grin appeared on Sonny's face. Who said that greed is a sin? It's a virtue! A goddamn virtue, I say! <laughs> <laughs> Nefis is going to
gonna be confused he's like what the fuck what the what the fuck did this bitch do <laughs> i wonder if neff can even because is it confirmed somehow that she can even see his he should she should right she should have like slave <laughs> lost from life <laughs> and his stats and shit he must just like she she he can see her pay to win <laughs> literally holy shit yeah she's yeah she should be able to see it would be weird otherwise it would be weird otherwise you're right It says little bitch boy Sunny. <laughs> little bitch boy Sunny is doing good today. That's what it says. <laughs> I imagine that he he has a mood bar and everything. <laughs> All his stats and shit. <laughs> he bought the season pass for the double XP. Holy. <laughs> from poor to pay to win yeah. it is literally pay to win i haven't seen it i didn't see it like that though but he i mean he did work to get them but it's like he uses coins to get shadow fry wins and it yeah <laughs> kind of pay to win in a way in a sense it's pay to win very sunny-esque to do Battle pass, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Sunny has a battle pass. This is so fucking stupid. <sighs> oh, okay. <laughs> Chapter 473. Mobius Loop. Because of the sudden influx of so many shards, Sunny got disoriented and swayed. His body was subtly rebuilding itself, growing stronger, more powerful. The difference was stark enough for him to feel it with every fiber of his being. As awake and absorbed soul shards, or shadow fragments in his case, the capacity of their cores grew, and their physical cap capability was slightly enhanced. Yes! Hello, hello, dark! Yes! Two shadows leave reading streams in a row. <laughs> Imagine if Shadow Slay was a game. Oh my god. Ugh. <laughs> you can buy coins to level up. <laughs> Maybe one day. Who knows? Who fucking knows? Probably not though. Doesn't seem like Guilty Three wants that, right? Because he doesn't—he doesn't want uh, it to become an anime, which I hundred percent understand. I feel like it should remain as it is. I like that. <laughs> if the anime would just be a completely different thing. It wouldn't be this. You need this books. <laughs> <laughs> the game is just watching your homies fight with their lives while you watch afraid. <laughs> yes. Oh. Hey, where was I? Mm, uh, slightly enhanced, right. Usually, it happened at such small increments that the difference was hard to judge. But this time, Sunny had done something pretty preposterous and consumed 1400 shadow fragments all at once he wondered if anyone else in history had accomplished the same feat not not likely maybe grabbing the edge of the altar to support himself he endured the strange and euphoric sensation as best as he could how could anyone do such a thing if as far as sunny knew everyone except nephis and him were limited to having only one core they wouldn't even be able to absorb this much. All right. Well, there has to be more than them. There's no ways just them. 
uh. <laughs> I hate doing that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Back on the Forgotten Shore, Sunny had gone from having almost no shadow fragments to fully saturating his core at a thousand. In the process, he went from being no different from a mundane human to the pinnacle of humanly possible, to breaking past those limits. Becoming an awakened had elevated him even further above what was considered normal. He was much stronger and faster than any mundane human could e ever hope to be, and capable of enhancing his prowess even more with essence, achieving truly superhuman might. And now, he went through a transformation that was similar in scale to his, to his rise on the Forgotten Shore, becoming so much more powerful and attractive. <laughs> In fact, he was now probably the strongest awakened both in the waking world and in the dream realm, with the exception of those whose aspects directly enhanced their physique. And even then, he could still double, even triple his physical ability with the help of the shadows. Insane! Sunny drew in a deep breath, then silently flexed his muscles, <laughs> feeling a new strength course through his veins. He felt incredible, incredibly strong, incredibly fast, incredibly resilient. But that wasn't all. The capacity, the capacity of both of his shadow cores was also dramatically enhanced, almost doubling in a matter of seconds. Therefore, his reserves of shadow essence were now also much deeper. <laughs> Sunny's a juice. What the fuck? His only weakness now is someone correct to training. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. It's so incredibly stupid. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that meant that he could fight at his peak from uh, form for longer used the active enchantments of his memories more, remain in the form of a shadow for a bigger amount of time, control his shadows at a larger distance, and travel further when using Shadow Step. In short, Sunny had just become even more of a menace. <laughs> menace! <laughs> Slowly getting accustomed to his new and improved physique, he couldn't help but smile. Now that he had finally made use of the miraculous coins, his previous disaster of an expedition came into perspective. Despite how much he had suffered and how close he had bruised with death, brushed with <laughs> bruised, had brushed with death, it all felt worth it somehow. His goal was to grow stronger, and Sunny had just made a big step toward that goal. It felt good. While Sunny was consumed with triumphant thoughts, his gaze fell on the obsidian knife that lay on the altar. Oh my god. He lingered for a while, then cautiously reached with his hand and touched the cold stone handle. Will it work? Okay, I imagine it doesn't. That knife had remained in the altar of the sanctuary for as long as humans had lived there. Pretty much every awakened that had ever set foot into the citadel had tried to raise it off with the white surface at least once, including Sunny. How will they? Ex how will he? Ex like, will he? Because people will be like. Who fucking took the knife? Like, everyone will want to know who it was. And he can't, like, he kind of has to tell that it was him, right? I wonder how that will play out. If he gets it, that is. We still don't know. But none of them succeeded. The knife seemed to weigh more than the entire island itself, as if it was glued to the altar. No matter how much people tried, no one had ever managed to move it even by a millimeter. Because I feel like if or like when he takes it out, something will happen. Maybe everything will fall down or some shit. Like, uh, like eh. <laughs> must have walked away. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> the knife is just gone. However, when Sunny used the miraculous coins for the first time, he seemed to have noticed that the obsidian knife moved a little. Therefore, he had made a conclusion. He had made a conclusion that if he were to place enough coins on the altar, the knife might become detached from it and fall into his hands. 
Holding his breath, Sonny wrapped his fingers around the handle. Here goes nothing. Putting all of his strength into the pole, he tried to lift the obsidian blade of the altar. The knife, however, he didn't work, oh, offered no resistance at all. It behaved like any knife would, easily sliding off the white stone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I read it completely wrong. Offered no resistance at all. Like, yeah, like normal. Because I was like, I just saw no at all. And I was like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> but it was the complete opposite. Yeah, of course it worked. <laughs> okay. Oops. <laughs> My bad. It behaved like any knife would, easily sliding off the white stone, which then caused Sonny to lose his balance and tumble to the ground in a graceless roll. Sitting up, he stared at the knife in his hand with wild eyes. Then he shuddered. Crap. Sunny half expected for the entire sanctuary to suddenly plunge into the sky below. Dude, that's what I... <laughs> yes. I don't know why. It was just something. It's like... Yeah. Or for the gateway to stop functioning. Oh, the gate didn't think about that one. That's why he wanted to just lift the knife a little. And then place it back down if something had gone awry. Instead, he was now a few steps away from the altar, with no way of getting back to it immediately. Luckily, none of his fears came true. I had fears. Despite the fact that the obsidian knife had left its usual spot on the altar, the island seemed fine. Everything was just as it had been a few seconds ago. Okay, maybe if he takes both. <laughs> maybe if he connects both, then... And the, the wyverns. <laughs> the knives are the wyverns. <laughs> he exhaled with visible relief. Well, good. I wouldn't want to mess things up too bad for everyone here in the Shane Dalles. Maybe something happened to the, the ivory... The... Fuck, not the ivory tower. The, the obsidian tower. Hmm. <laughs> the knife is another mimic. No! <laughs> I swear you two are the same people. <laughs> uh, uh, no. No. <laughs> what an insult. <laughs> Rising to his feet, Sonny looked at the obsidian knife. It seemed to have been cut from a single piece of black stone, with its blade sharpened and polished. There wasn't anything special in how the knife looked. In fact, it seemed a little bit crude almost primitive. There was also one little problem. The knife did not turn into a memory. Ah, I didn't think that it was. Like, I always forget, it's like, ah, oh, things are memories. It's like, ah, oh, things are things. <laughs> Sunny had expected it to disintegrate into a rain of sparks and enter his core, just like Weaver's Mask had done, or like shard memories behaved when raised by a new wielder. Mordred had mentioned something to that effect when speaking about the ivory knife in the Night Temple. Hmm. He told Sunny that one had to spill blood on the Black Altar to receive a memory of the blade that rested on its surface. Completely had forgotten all about that. But the obsidian knife did no such thing. It just remained in his hand, as material and palpable as one could imagine. What was even stranger, though, was that the knife didn't appear to have a spell weave. It was, without a doubt, a magical item. Sonny could feel that it was, even if he didn't know what properties that en entailed. However, when he looked beneath the surface of the knife, he didn't see the familiar pattern of ethereal strings weaving themselves around anchoring lights. What he saw instead was just brilliant radiance, as though the knife was filled to the brim with soul essence, and in that radiance was just a single string. It wasn't the same type of ethereal string, though. It was a... Sunny frowned. A string of fate. Oh my god. A single string of fate was somehow placed inside the obsidian knife. <clears throat> Folding on itself endlessly, with its two ends connected to create a perfect, never-ending circle. Sunny stared at the strange string for a while, and then furrowed his bro. Bro, fuck it, please, bro. <laughs> now, what is that all about? More mysteries and more mysteries. 
and some more mysteries. When will we get answers? <laughs> Maybe never. But I like mysteries. I want more of them. <laughs> okay. Chapter 474 Truth Be Told Sunny studied the obs Sunny studied the obsidian knife for a while and concluded that he had no idea what this thing was supposed to be capable of. It wasn't a memory, and it didn't have a weave, so neither the spell nor his own ability to perceive and somewhat understand such things could help him. <laughs> this book should be called Lord of Mysteries at this point. Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lysini, hi! I'm glad you're streaming again. I thought the next stream was gonna be next week. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so did I, maybe, but it turned out this way today. <laughs> I enjoyed it too much yesterday. <laughs> Hello, Tack! Missed nearly an hour. Yep. How could you? <laughs> Yay! Yes. The only thing Sunny knew for certain was that someone had plucked the string from the tapestry of fate and placed it inside the knife, making a circle out of it, for some mysterious purpose. Everything else was going to have to wait until the next time he heard from Wardred. The Lost Prince was bound to know more about the obsidian knife, since he seemed to know a lot about the Shane Owls and their past in general. Because he was there. Probably. Hopefully. That's what I want. Now, however, Sunny had to deal with another problem. He had to explain the disappearance of the knife to the White Feather Clan. Somehow. Yep. Come morning, or at any moment, really. If someone decided to leave the Dream Realm or entered it in the middle of the night, people would become aware that the knife that no one had been able to lift or move was now gone. Sunny had no doubt that it was not going to take a long time for them to figure out that it was him who had taken it. And after that, what to do, what to do. In the end, he came up with a really crazy idea. Huh? Something that he would have never even considered in normal circumstances. Something that went against his very nature. The fuck? He went and told Master Rowan the truth. <laughs> Well, he kind of has to. Well, the part that had to do with the miraculous coins, to be precise. Okay. Visiting the White Feather compound, compound in the middle of the night was a bit strange, but luckily for him, the older man turned out to be up. He was preparing to leave on a patrol, and so rose early to make the necessary preparations. After Sunny was done talking, the mighty griffin rider stared at him for a while with a perplexed expression. Then he asked to take a look at the knife. Sunny reluctantly handed the, handed the obsidian knife over and watched nervously as Master Rowan inspected it. He was really hoping that the White Feather Clan would not decide, decide to keep it. There were very few things Sunny could do if they did. Finally, the strapping master returned the obsidian knife to him and asked curiously, So you managed to lift it by using Noctis coins on the altar? Sunny nodded. Yeah. Wait, y you know about the coins? Master Rowan nodded. A few have been found here and there on the Isles over the years. It seems that this was the preferred currency people who lived here thousands of years ago used. No one had ever discovered a literal treasure trove of them, though, as you did. He thought for a bit and then smiled. <laughs> Actually, I think I have one stash somewhere. Wait here for a bit, alright? He's like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> With that, Rowan disappeared into the stone chateau, and then returned ten or so minutes later, holding a familiar golden coin in his hand. Found it! I used to carry it with me a lot before, as a lucky charm. Let's go. Let's go what? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I, it's my lucky charm. Now I'm gonna make it disintegrate. <laughs> 
What are you, some of your favorite moments so far, by the way? I'm at chapter 220 of your read through so far. Um, oh my god. Shit. The beach of. <laughs> <laughs> Every interaction they've had ever. Like, oh my god, I don't even know. Favorite moments interactions i mean the beach episode was a special <laughs> was a special part <laughs> that's for sure i had way too much fun about harper <laughs> like i will never forget it because it was so fucking bizarre the people told me like bitch i cried and i'm like yeah i'm sorry <laughs> Stream moment? 100% Harper. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's so much thing. Like, I don't even remember. Like, when I do the, uh, the Thursday stream, I don't remember what I read Tuesday. So it's hard for me. I would love to... Um, make some type of edit or some shit about the um, like edit the stream somehow or do something because i just want to relive it again as well because there's some fucked up shit that has been said <laughs> during this but that's so much work and i don't even know what i would do <laughs> sonny found his way to harper's heart yep <laughs> it's it's so hard like i can't i don't know so many things are my favorite moments i feel like i have one every stream so because this shit's used to, to so fucked sometimes and so funny <laughs> like i laugh constantly about shit they say <laughs> oh but yes. Oi, now something broke. Oops, I broke it again. Oh, well, it's not that bad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Continuing. But good question. Sorry that I didn't have a good answer. Uh, he found it. Let's go. Together, they returned to the altar island. The first thing Master Owen did was glance at the moon and then place the coin on the altar. Once again, it gleamed and disappeared, leaving a bewildered expression on the handsome man's face. I'll be damned! I used to receive a bit of soul essence! You were right! He shook his head in astonishment. To think that these coins had such a use all this time, and no one was the wiser. Good job, Sunless! Oh my god. <laughs> Dad is proud. <laughs> then Master Rowan hesitated for a few moments and asked, can you place the knife back on the altar? Sonny did as he was asked, and then watched as the mighty griffin rider used all of his formidable power in a vain attempt to lift the obsidian blade off the white surface. When he was done with, the fu with that futile, futile attempt and stepped back to catch his breath, Sonny simply took hold of the handle and retrieved the knife without any problem. <laughs> Imagine if he couldn't, like, oh, you put it back, now we have to pay again. It's a one time. <laughs> Interesting. Then came the moment of truth. Sonny tensed as he waited for the older man's decision. After thinking about it for a while, Master Rowan said, Well, I don't know if you know this, Sunless, but there is a sacred rule among us awakened in the dream realm. The sanctity, the sanctity, of, san, the sanctity of this rule is unaccessible and beyond reproach. And that rule is finders keepers. Yes! <laughs> Sunny blinked. What? The strapping master grinned. So you don't have to worry about either me or Tyrus taking that knife from you. Then, however, his smile dimmed. Other people, though, might not be as reasonable. Even if no one knows what power this thing has, or if there even is anything special about it, someone might get too excited and act in a regrettable manner. So I'd advise you to put the knife back on the altar, until the time you feel like using it. Eh, I guess. 
Sonny considered his words and had to admit that this, indeed, would be the best decision for now. Master Owen helped him confirm that no one else would be able to take the knife, and carrying it around before venturing into the nightmare had no benefit. <laughs> Summoning the memory of how exactly the obsidian blade had been placed on the altar, he put it in its previous spot and took a step back. Master Rowan nodded. <laughs> As things should be. <laughs> now die. <laughs> Good choice. Please, do tell us if you find out anything about its purpose. At least if it has anything to do with the well-being of the sanctuary. If need be, we'll compensate you fairly to either take the knife off your hands or lend it for a bit, if that's what you prefer. Sunny agreed to this condition, since it sounded reasonable. With that out of the way, the strapping griffin rider looked at him with sparks dancing in his eyes. So, uh, what are you going to do now? Sunny frowned. What a weird question. Go home, take a shower, deal with some real world business? Why? What are you, what are you going to do? <laughs> Master Owen laughed. What do you mean, what am I, what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on my patrol, and then I'll go coin hunting, of course. I was just gonna say, by the way, I assume that he means coin hunting because he will get uh, soul essence, right? But I also like, well, what if he pays? Like, because we, we don't know, because when he placed one coin, right, he felt like the knife moved a bit. And so if you pay enough, then maybe we'll move a bit. And then maybe if we say Master Owen puts down, let's say it was a thousand or something, like 1,600 or whatever, and then he can also lift the knife, then he can just like, joink mine. Whoever pays more, it goes to. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Because I feel like, of course, like if he's actually going to go coin hunting and then come like of course he like if he gets a lot of course he's gonna try and lift it again right like who wouldn't and why like yeah so we don't know if the knife's like no i'm sunny's now or if he's like anyone anyone who pays <laughs> we don't know how much of a, a bitch the knife is <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I don't think I think he, he will be able to take it, but it's like I, if we also wouldn't surprise me in the future. He's like, now I'm gonna go get the knife. It's like, what? The knife is gone or some shit. I don't know. Okay, just saying that for future, might. I suspect that everyone in the sanctuary is going to be searching for Noctis coins like madmen for quite some time after that discovery of yours. People are going to get really busy. Sunny remained silent for a bit and then said in a very serious tone. Oh, so he's got to tell everyone, by the way. Gold digger knife. Nice. <laughs> Based. <laughs> Are there enough coins, though? Sunny took most of it. I guess. I guess. I guess. Could be, could be, could be. Hopefully. Like I, it's not like I don't want him to get the knife. I want him to get the knife. Hello! I'm waiting for the bus. Hopefully we'll be there soon. And you can be inside of a bus. <laughs> Enjoying the ride. Listening to something. Music, preferably. <laughs> if there's another mimic, yep. Yep. Mm. Good luck then. Oh, and one thing. If you find a big chest full of them, make your griffin stomp on it a few times before coming closer. Better yet, do that to every chest you encounter in the future. Never trust a, sh never trust a chest not to eat you, is what I'm trying to say. I sure won't. Sunny is so weird. <laughs> With that, he said goodbye to the handsome master, placing his hand on the altar and returned to the real world. There was a lot he had to do there. Like... Watching the movie. <laughs> That's a lot of PTSD. <laughs> I doubt every mimic has those coins. Me too. Okay. 
a few things. I thought he had a lot he had to do. Okay. Chapter 475. A few things to do. Guilty three. <laughs> Best. <laughs> like these are gold. <laughs> Some time later, Sonny was in his kitchen, eating the breakfast he had just prepared. He was thinking of all the things on his to-do list. They were in no particular order. Selling the soul shards he had brought with him for, from the dream realm, and setting up a stable method to sell more in the future. <laughs> Returning to the dreamscape to participate in duels on the professional arenas to practice shadow dance and feed the mantle of the underworld with victories. Oh, that one's gonna... that one will be interesting. Oh, observing rain and thinking, <laughs> stalking my sister <laughs> and thinking of a way to deal with that whole situation. <laughs> Learning how to properly fight with a spear. Visiting Neff. Oh, writing a report about the Noctis coins for teacher Julius. So there were a lot of things. There were probably more things he had to do, but was forgetting. But he already had enough on his plate. Movie! <laughs> movie! <laughs> He's hinting off the new movie. He forgot about the movie. Finishing the breakfast and staring... Star <laughs> staring, yeah. Staring toward the door of the guest bedroom, where Effie still slept while, his, while her spirit wandered the dream realm. He shook his head and went out to sit on the porch as he drank some delicious tea. It was early morning. Sunny enjoyed the pleasant view of the terrace district, watched as Rain walked to the public transport hub on her way to school, and then activated his communicator. My god. <laughs> Observed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he was going to start with the simplest of tasks. Which is? Navigating to the market section of the network, he habitually input, input his identification number to access the awakened section of it. Sunny had browsed the wares there before, even if back, even if back then he barely had enough money to buy anything. Today, however, things were different. Today, he was approaching the network as a seller, not as a buyer. Sunny entered soul shards as the keywords and stared at the listings, appreciating the number of zeros in their prices. It seemed as though the value of shards was not uniform. Of course, the higher rank shards cost much more. But people, strangely, also seemed to care about what nightmare creature the crystal came from and how it had been defeated. What the hell? The fuck? Apparently, there were collectors among the wealthy mundane humans who were very interested in this sort of thing. Some superstitious awakened also believed, for some reason, that absorbing bad shards would be detrimental to the purity of their souls. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? What are bad shards? Are there good... <laughs> bad nightmare creatures and good nightmare creatures? What the fuck is a bad shard? The fuck? Weirdos. Agreed. Sunday didn't know a lot of things, but one thing he did know was that there was not a single Awaken out there with a pure soul. <laughs> Even the best of them were murderers by nature, and their hearts were painted black by the nightmares they had experienced. Not to mention that there were no bad or good soul shards, right? They were all pretty much the same, coming from terrible monsters and earned through bloodshed. Like, what the fuck do you mean? That pure new matters? Like, drugs. <laughs> anyway, that was something he was going to consider when creating his own listing. After getting the gist of the pricing, Sunny opened the, for the form to create his own digital shop. Without thinking too much, he named it Brilliant Emporium. <laughs> yes! And went on to fill out the entire form. Then it came the time to put his soul shards into the auction. Sunny wrote simply, Four soul shards coming from a fallen devil, more than the mimic. The creature was killed and eaten by the pro pro proprietor of the brilliant emporium himself. Before that, the more than the mimic had been pretending to be a treasure chest and devouring those lured by the promise of treasure. In the end, it bit off more than it could chew. <laughs> ah, he's funny! <laughs> Move over, Amazon. <laughs> Brilliant Emporium just opened. <laughs> 
<laughs> Satisfied with that, he finalized the listing and stared at it for a bit, as if expecting something to bid, someone to bid instantly. However, nothing of the sort happened. With a sigh, Sunny deactivated the communicator and went back inside. Soon. I will be rich soon. <laughs> it took several days for all four of his soul shards to sell. After that, Sunny had to arrange secure delivery, which was somewhat of a headache on its own. Overall, the process took too much time for his already packed schedule. He also felt that he was missing some crucial knowledge on how to make his business really boom. Even though the product he was trying to sell was first class, there were not a lot of fallen rank soul shards out there, compared to dormant and awakened ones. The bidding had not really taken off. He did make a sizable amount of money, but not as sizable as it could have been. <laughs> Still, it was enough to purchase a couple of sheep lower rank memories. Sunny simply looked for the most useless ones, which no one would ever want to buy, and made the minimum offer. However, it was selling them however it was selling them <laughs> Whoever whoever it was selling them must have been happy beyond belief to finally be rid of these things. I read however and not whoever. I'm Okay. Sunny was going to feed the memories to Saint immediately after receiving them, but before that he spent a lot of time training with the Cruel Sight and his underground dojo. He had a solid understanding of how to use a short sword, but a spear was an alien beast to him. Even though Sunny knew the basic rules of combat technique and could perform somewhat effectively, effectively while wielding any weapon, he was far, far away from mastering them. How fortunate it was then that he had a renowned spear master, raised by wolves herself, crashing in his guest bedroom. I was gonna say, like, just make Effie help you. But then I was like, maybe he doesn't want to show that he has it, but it's like, that doesn't really matter. You show her. Blah, blah, blah. Granted, she couldn't really spar with him due to her condition, but he had Saint for that. Yeah. In the end, the three of them spent a lot of time in his basement. <laughs> Effie said. So, <laughs> you want to invite me <laughs> down to the basement with your girlfriend? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to spar? <laughs> to teach you how to spar <laughs> with your girlfriend? <laughs> No! <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> the king of Windows comes. Consequently, I didn't notice most of them until I watched you react. Yeah, a lot of people say that. <laughs> a lot of people like, I have never, <laughs> I have never thought about this. But it's so, like, it's hitting me in the face, like... <laughs> I cannot not see it. Like, it's insane. <laughs> okay. In the end, the three of them spent a lot of time in his basement. Yay. Effie was observing and explaining to him what to do, how to do it, and most importantly, what not to do. Yes, good Effie, good. <laughs> Saint served as his opponent, opponent, and the mighty enemy to polish his nascent skill against. <laughs> And Sunny. Sunny found himself once again in the role of a willing punching bag. It was just like in that week they had spent in the hidden chamber of the ruined cathedral in the dark city. Sunny even got nostalgic, remembering how cozy and nice things had been back there. It been back then. Yes, when his shared got destroyed. A sad, sad moment. Rip share. Now, however, things were much better. Not only was there an unlimited amount of delicious food they could eat during the breaks in his training, <laughs> there were even medicine <laughs> and 
ice baths to ease the pain in his bruised and beaten body. My goodness. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Meanwhile, his girlfriend, his real girlfriend, is in coma and fighting for her life while Sunny here is sparring with other girls. <laughs> Guilty 3 knew what he was writing. He must, he must know. Like, this guy, he, he can't be this pure. Like, there is no way. No way. If he is, I'm so sorry for ruining your <laughs> Training with Saints was really effective, but she really didn't know how to pull her punches. <laughs> Just like that, a few days passed. And then, something that Sunny had been dreading for a while finally and inevitably happened. It was time to accompany Kai to the premiere of the Song of Light and Darkness. Ah, oh my god! <laughs> Okay, I have to take a bathroom break for this. Holy shit, I am so excited. I am so excited. Excited, 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 excited. Okay, okay, okay. be right back, be right back. Be right back. This is gonna be so cringe, it's gonna physically affect me, isn't it? No. It's gonna be epic and amazing. Oh, I I please, I want all the details. I'm predicting <laughs> romance between <laughs> the main cast in the movie, in the movie. And that's the only reason why romance tag is here. And it's gonna be fucked up. <laughs> I wonder how much things will be, I, I fuck it. I, I've, she tell me, chapter 476, a song of light and darkness. If I'm gonna be so fucking sad, by the way, if they're just like, this is how it was. Hmm. It's like, no, I want to go through it. I want scene by scene reacted to by Sunny. Please. <laughs> I know I won't, but please, please. Just not go in, reaction, go out. Like, they went in. After the movie, Sunny felt blah, blah, blah. no, 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 no. I want to be there. Okay. <sighs> Sometime later, Sunny was pondering his life choices while sitting in the back row of a crowded theater. The lights were already off, <laughs> which obviously meant nothing to him. People seemed to be really excited to see the movie, though, especially Effie, who was who was to his side, munching on something called popcorn and staring at the screen. Oh my god. <laughs> in the darkness, somber music started to play, reverberating through the entire space and making the audience shiver. Effie suddenly jabbed her elbow into his ribs. Do you know who is the composer for this thing? It's Griffin. Who the fuck is Griffin? 
I don't know how they managed to get him, but he scored an entire movie. Such an honor. Can you believe it? Sonny had no idea who this Griffin guy was. Okay. <laughs> but judging by Effie's reaction, he was someone famous. Massaging his ribs with a grimace, Sonny offered a stifled answer. I can. Who the fuck? On the screen, the interior of a spacious and beautifully lit room appeared. A small girl with silver hair was playing on a carpet. <laughs> what? <laughs> is this? Is this? <laughs> this is the this is the part when when Neff was sitting in the room. Uh, she was sitting in the in the room uh, on the floor, right? And Sunny came in. It's like Neff. I brought your friends. <laughs> Do you remember them? <laughs> like when she was fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin is a real person in the Shadow Slave community who makes Shadow Slave music, by the way. He's kind of famous, so he cameoed here. Oh, no way! That's so cool! Oh, that's so cool! Oh! Nice! Okay, oh, that's so nice. Cute. Yeah, I haven't listened to all of it just because I'm scared of getting recommendations and then get being spoiled by them or some shit by the names of the songs or something so but i will but i will i will i will I will okay <laughs> it's so cute that she's like oh my god <laughs> such an honor oh it really shows the guilty three is happy about it like it's positive like oh thank you that's cute <laughs> so name even if fucking dies <laughs> oh my god okay 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 <sighs> on the screen, the interior of a spacious and beautiful literature appeared. A small girl with silver hair was playing on a carpet, while a handsome man with dark circles under his eyes was shown studying a map. <laughs> what the hell? Was that supposed to be Nephis? If so, her hair should have been black. It only turned silver after her first nightmare. Effie giggled. So cute! <laughs> The girl, meanwhile, approached the table and reached to touch the strange sword that lay on it. The blade of the sword was short and misshapen, as though shattered a long time ago. Before the girl cut her, uh, before the girl cut herself, though, the man lifted the sword and brought it out of her reach. This is not a toy, Nephis. What the fuck? Sunny palmed his face and grimaced. But, Daddy, why is your sword broken? Oh my god, because his name is Broken Sword, I want to die. <laughs> this is so stupid. The man smiled. So what if it is broken? It is still sharp. <coughs> then he put his hand on the girl's shoulder and looked at her with a very serious expression. One day, you will wield a sword too, darling. This, this did not happen. <laughs> when you do, remember one thing. We awaken only raise arms to protect humanity. As long as we don't give up, no matter how dire the situation is, there will be hope. Just like this sword, humanity is more resilient than it seems. <laughs> this is so much better than I thought it was gonna be, by the way. <sighs> Sunny tilted his head. Wait, this doesn't make- this doesn't even make sense. He's gonna be so pissed off about this movie. The scene, however, was already over. The screen turned black for a few moments, and the movie transitioned into the future. Nephis, now a languid jade beauty with a slim waist, generous figure, long eyelashes, and mesmerizing gray eyes, was entering the academy. <laughs> yes, this is epic. <laughs> what followed was a long training montage, showing her defeating every other sleeper there with a the training sword all the while offering words of wisdom, <laughs> sure, like, never give up hope, or remember your duty, or we are humans. <laughs> what the fuck? We are humans. <laughs> we are humans. Like, okay. <laughs> Great, I guess. The fuck? The propaganda was so tacky and laid so thick, Sonny couldn't help but cringe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like we would forget, right? Like, what the fuck? 
The only person the Jade Beauty couldn't defeat was a handsome young man with masculine features, broad shoulders, and a noble bearing. Hanley Caster. My god. Oh no. Oh no. Sonny should have guessed by the invitation Kai had given him, but the director of the movie was obviously hinting at the nascent romantic feelings between the two. Oh, between them! Oh my god. Oh, of course! Oh my fucking shit. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping for like, oh, but they wouldn't do that about Sunny. Obviously, I hoped it was Sunny and he would be like, no, <laughs> embarrassed and shit. Just like, fuck this. And then Effie would laugh at him. But of course, it would be between Caster because who gives a shit about Sunny? Like, th the people who made this movie are like, why would she like Sunny? <laughs> He's an ass. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> I wish I wasn't human at the time of reading. Cringe. No, no, no. This is beautiful. <sighs> Their conversation in the academy seemed to be about swordsmanship, but were also somehow deeply flirtatious. <laughs> the actors had mad chemistry together. Mad! chemistry <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> he wanted to vomit but the audience was clearly enthralled by the two leads <clears throat> sunny didn't dwell on this preposterous thing for long though because right about then his own character was introduced <laughs> is it gonna be a little hunched fucking <laughs> <laughs> what spell is this oh my god please 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 the actor hired to play him was a literal child. <laughs> oh my god. No. Fucking way. It was a teenage boy of about 13 years of age. <laughs> With a mischievous grin and a face that, for lack of better words, simply begged to be punched. <laughs> Worse than that, he was shown as extremely uneducated, clumsy, and naive. In short, Sonny was the comic relief. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> this is one of my new, new favorite moments. Oh my god. He is comic relief. Played by a child. Oh. He turned to Effie in outrage, only to see her laughing silently. Of course she would be. Oh man, who's the casting director for this movie? I need to send them flowers. Even his shadows were laughing. Both of them. <laughs> Sonny gritted his teeth, promised to exact revenge on Kai and Effie for making him endure this, and turned back to the street. <laughs> Holy shit. Ah, oh, sunny green. Oh, yeah. Finally, Nephis entered the dream realm and found herself on the forgotten shore. The coral labyrinth and the dark sea were recreated with such detail that he couldn't help but shiver. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. Oh. Well, they did their research, at least. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> the audience was holding their breath during Neff's journey to the dark city. The well, they're not going to mention Cassie? The terrifying nature of the dark tides and the deadly battles with awakened nightmare creatures populating the labyrinth created a truly tense, suffocating atmosphere. Of course, everyone knew that the main character was not going to die in the first half of the movie. But that's where Sunny, as well as Cassie, came into play. Just as he had expected, the movie showed them as a burden that had to be carried by Nephis on her heroic journey. Even Cassie wasn't- isn't Cassie cute at least? <laughs> but since very few people know- knew who Sunny was, his fate was uncertain. <laughs> Nephis was bound to survive, but what about her friends? And thanks to his character, there were also moments of pleasant levi levity amidst all the tension. A few times, the whole audience exploded with laughter after Sonny on the screen did something especially stupid or said something really outrageous. <laughs> he had also slowly developed a catchphrase. It was, 
are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> that not only allowed the audience to chuckle, but also gave Nevis the opportunity to educate their worthless follower, thus naturally delivering a lot of necessary exposition. <laughs> The real Sonny wasn't amused though, because they weren't laughing with him. They were laughing at him. Idiots! What do you even know? They didn't know anything. Since no one really knew what the three of them had gone through on their way to the dark city, the writer simply came up with some dire dangers for Nephis to overcome. Eventually though, they made it to the ancient city and met Effie. <gasps> Effie was played by a very tall, athletic and attractive actress. The way she played her, though, was a sight to behold. Basically, the actress went out of her way to portray the hunters as a charismatic, but not very bright savage, who was all brawn and no brain. <laughs> all she knew how to do was fight. All she knew how to do was fight, eat, and break things. <laughs> Sunny turned to Effie and grinned, full of malice and gloating. <laughs> This was the first time he had ever seen the boisterous young woman, completely mortified. <laughs> Casting director, you say? I think I'll send them flowers, too. <laughs> oh my god, oh, I fear that we won't see more of the movie now. That's sad. But holy shit, it was amazing. <laughs> Oh, and obviously Kai will be super fucking good because <laughs> everyone already loves him. Famous dude. Oh my god. This is crazy. Next. More, please. Chapter 477. Standing Ovation. Oh, yes. After Nephis reached the Dark City, oh, we're continuing, and the Huntress was introduced. Both Sunny and Effie watched the rest of the movie with bleak expressions. Oh, okay, maybe not. Oh, okay. Yes, we are. The second act took place in the Outer Settlement and was dedicated to Neff's heroic attempts to protect and inspire the young men and women trapped there. There were a lot of imp impassioned speeches, blood-chilling expeditions into the Dark City, and tense altercations with Gunlog's forces. There were also a lot of shenanigans from young Sunny, to the delight of the audience. At some point, people started to scream, Are you crazy? Along with him. <laughs> so stupid. And a bit later, there was a sort of comical moment of growth for the character, when he asked, Am I crazy? <laughs> Instead, and went along with Nevis without offering his usual critique, which was met with cheers. <laughs> Shit. Most of this part of the movie, though, was dedicated to the genuine respect and camaraderie that blossomed between Nevis and Caster in this dire time. Oh my god. With a handsome male lead as her right hand, Changing Star successfully united the people of the Outer Settlement, reminded them what it meant to be humans, and challenged Gunlog to save boisterous Epi from unjust imprisonment. The duel itself was choreographed somewhat well, even if it had nothing to do with the real thing. The moves both the radiant heroine and the cruel tyrant used were flashy and dramatic and expressed the mood well, but anyone trying to actually fight like that would probably risk having their enemy die of laughter. <laughs> the third act showed the siege of the Crimson Spire, the heroic stand of the warriors of the first line and Effie, Kai's battle in, uh, first line and Effie, Kai's battle in the skies with the spire messengers, and Neff and Caster fighting back to back slaying dozens and dozens of nightmare creatures together. Okay. The audience seemed to have forgotten to breathe, and even Sunny had to admit that the battle scene was filmed especially well, showcasing the, ho the chaos, horror, and terrible toll of human lives that such a massacre was bound to reap. Many side characters that people had already grown to love died heroically, and he even heard a few sobs coming from the darkness. Enhanced by the beautiful music, the atmosphere was not tragic though. On the contrary, it was triumphant and exalted. As if to die in this way was the highest honor a human could receive. A bit uncomfortable, Sonny shifted in his seat. That griffin guy really knows how to make a tune. Aww, it's so cute! So cute. 
When the situation was the most desperate, with the dark water rising and threatening to drown all the surviving warriors, a sudden change happened. The sea suddenly retreated, and the monsters started to fall to the ground. Castor, covered in blood and wounds, looked at Nephis and whispered, I love you. <laughs> My lady, the sun. Indeed, the sun had suddenly turned menacingly red, its light eradicating the remaining nightmare creatures creatures and assaulting the humans. For the first time in the entire movie, an uncertain and desperate expression appeared on Changing Star's face. Salvation came from someone who the audience would have never expected to see do something so profound. A clear ringing of the bell resounded in the air, and the small figure of clumsy, useless Sonny could be seen near the tower, waving his hand in the air. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> The survivors rushed toward the crimson spire and entered inside. There, Nephis looked up and then turned to Sunny. <laughs> Someone has to stall the terror so that everyone could escape. I, <laughs> I will do battle with that, with that nightmare. But there's an important task you must complete. Lead all these people to the gateway. <laughs> Sunny on the screen looked at Changing Star with fear. Lady Nephis, are you crazy? I'm just a clumsy kid from the outskirts. How can you entrust something so important to someone like me? <laughs> Sunny in the real world suppressed an infuriated groan. People in the audience, though, were rather emotional. You can do it, Sunny. You got this, kid. <laughs> kid. <laughs> You're a great scout. Don't sell yourself short. Oh my god. On the screen, the beautiful actress playing Nephis looked down on the comical, slightly pathetic boy in front of her and put her hand on his shoulder. We awakened. <laughs> Must rise to the occasion to protect humanity. As long as we don't give up, no matter how dire the situation is, there will be hope. I believe in you, Sonny. You are capable of much more than you think. <laughs> this is so fucked up. <sighs> With that, she left the survivors and went off to fight the terror, while Sonny guided everyone to the gateway. And somewhere in the process, Castor left the group to aid Changing Star in battle. The last scenes of the movie cut between the hundred survivors fighting their way to the gateway and the tragic duo battling the terrifying creature at the top of the spire. Many people in the audience were crying, knowing full well that neither of them was going to return to the real world. In the end, Castor heroically sacrificed himself to protect Nephis. <laughs> Ugh. Breaking the hearts of so many viewers. The survivors found the gateway and escaped seconds before it was destroyed. The last shot showed a bloodied Neff walking out of the tower, holding a broken sword in her hand. Oh my god. As she gazed at the forgotten shore, a lone tear rolled down her cheek. As long as we don't give up, there is hope. The screen turned black, and in the next moment, the audience exploded with applause. <laughs> oh my god. I love that this is how people see Sunny. <laughs> like when they've said everything, they're still like, no, he didn't do shit. <laughs> like, this is how people will remember Sunny. Because <laughs> people will watch the movie and be like, wow, this is what happened. And they're like, yes, this is what happened. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. <laughs> Sonny stared at all those people, many of them applauding with tears in their eyes, the strange expression on his face. Did they actually like that crap? He turned to Effie, lingered for a moment and asked, Uh, did you like it? <laughs> the former huntress gave him a long look. Then she said, What I am. Oh, I get What am I? An idiot? Of course I didn't like it. It's such a piece of crap. Sunny exhaled with relief. Exhaled with relief. What did Kai think? At least there was one other sane person in this theater. <laughs> what about Kai? <laughs> what about Kai? Oh my god. Oh, that was beautiful. Completely and just beautiful. 
chapter 478 credit where credit is due after the movie was over kai appeared to deafening applause and gave a short speech congratulating the director and the crew of the movie and then inviting them on the stage for a short q a wait what did kai actually have to do with this movie what did he actually do what did he he <laughs> what did he do hello Sunny stared at the director of this travesty, seriously considering silently assassinating him for a few moments. <laughs> then he glanced at Effie, who, judging by her face, was thinking the same. <laughs> Advertising, probably? Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. Probably. He's the face of the movie. He lingered for a few moments and asked, What do you want to do? The young woman inhaled deeply, turned to him and smiled. I am hungry. Let's go eat. Together, they snuck out of the screening hall and went to find the theater's restaurant. There were a lot of people there who, just like them, had decided to skip the PR portion of the event and were now enjoying food and drinks, discussing the movie with lively expressions. <laughs> Sonny and Effie got something so got something something. Sunny and Effie got themselves something to eat and sat at an empty table, then grew quiet for a while. Each was preoccupied with their own thoughts. <laughs> now that Sunny had a little time to digest the movie, his anger subsided a bit. In fact, he was even happy. <laughs> okay. Sure, the way he was portrayed in the story was as far from the truth as it could have been, and more than a little bit humiliating. But, in a way, this was exactly what he needed. True. Now that Nevis had become his master, he didn't have to hide his strength and true name that much. But he still preferred to remain in the shadows, not only because there was a possibility of becoming masterless again, but also because it was the best way to be in the world so full of hidden dangers and powerful enemies. Being renowned, renowned would make a lot of things difficult for him, and make every battle he fought after that harder. After all, there was no better advantage than being underestimated by the enemy which will not happen when he's Mongol again. From that point of view, the ridiculous way in which he was portrayed in the movie was a blessing. It made the possibility of anyone thinking highly of him that much lower. <laughs> of course, not everyone was going to watch that travesty. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a lot of people watching it. But many would, and their opinions was going to spread. Who would believe that Changing Star's bumbling sidekick was, in fact, one of the most dangerous awakened alive, and thus considered him as a serious threat? Pretty much no one. So, in fact, the director of the Song of Light and Darkness unintentionally did him a favor. Satisfied with that conclusion, Sunny looked around. He saw several people looking at Effie with stunned expressions, clearly gathering their courage to come and introduce themselves, but no one had yet. He could hear their whispers, though. Oh my god, look at how much she's eating. She's gonna, only gonna eat. <laughs> Is that what she did? She's just brawn, no brain. <laughs> and she just eats. And kills things. Hits things. Oh my god. All the time. <laughs> Kill me. <sighs> look, it's her. Raised by wolves. Nice whispers. Oh my. I heard about their situation, but to actually see, she's so brave. <laughs> what? Every herself was strangely quiet. She ignored the whispers, then looked at him and asked, Hey, Sunny, can I ask you something? Sensing that this was not going to be a simple question, he tensed a little, and then said, Sure, what is it? <laughs> Who actually says, oh my, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've never heard such a thing. Effie hesitated for a few moments, then lowered her voice so that no one would be able to overhear. Did Casta really leave to help Nephis? Ah. Sunny stared at his friend for a bit, then shook his head. No. He left to make sure that she dies. Effie inhaled deeply. I see. She didn't continue that conversation, as though his answer confirmed something that she had already suspected. Well, despite her often boorish demeanor and the way she was portrayed in the movie, Effie was anything but stupid. 
In fact, she was extremely intelligent, cool-headed, and cunning. Otherwise, she would have never survived for three long years alone on the streets of the Dark City. It was only natural for her to have suspicions, considering how much she knew. Luckily, Effie did not ask anything else. Mostly because of a strange man who entered the restaurant, looked around, noticed their table, and walked over with gleaming eyes. Oh no, another fan of Raised by Wolves. The man stopped in front of them. Glancing at Effie, glanced at Effie and then turned to Sunny with an odd expression. <laughs> no. Uh, are you awake in sunless? <laughs> Sunny, blink Sunny blinked. What? Um. Yes. A bright smile appeared in the man's face. Oh my. Oh goodness. It is such an honor. I'm such a huge fan of yours. What the fuck? What is happening? Sunny stared at the beaming man, trying to comprehend what he was saying. Misjudging his expression, the man hurriedly said, What can it be? Is it because of the Emporium? <laughs> no way. Oh, sorry, I was so nervous that I forgot to introduce myself. I am a writer. In, in fact, it was I who wrote the screenplay for A Song of Light and Darkness. And it's all, all thanks to you. What the fuck? Effie stared at Sunny with an expression that didn't promise him anything good and asked in a sweet voice. Oh, all thanks to him, really? How come? I am in trouble! <laughs> <laughs> the man's smile grew even wider. Exploration report on the Forgotten Shore. Oh, it is such a brilliant piece of academic work. I based most of my research on your profound book, uh, <laughs> profound work, Awaken Soundless. Oh, right, right, right. Re yeah, okay. Everyone on the crew and everyone in the cast read it at least once. I even insisted on giving you the co-writer credit, but sadly it was impossible. Oh, oh I would have died if it said his name. Oh. You know, due to you not being a member of the Screenwriters Guild. But fret not, I'll let everyone know that if it weren't for you, this movie wouldn't exist. Holy shit. Sunny stared at the man with wide eyes and then said in a weak voice, Please don't. But it was of no use. Oh, you are so humble, so modest. Well, of course, what else would I expect from a researcher as talented as you? But it wouldn't be right for me to receive all the praise. No, people must know. Oh my god. He looked at the restaurant and proclaimed, not even trying to keep his voice down. That it is you, awake and sunless, who they must thank for being able to enjoy your wonderful film. Sonia looked at the floor. I guess I'm going to have to kill Kai. Or wait, no. Actually, that probably makes us even after the whole- Wait, that probably makes us even after the whole Mongol disaster. <laughs> Does it though? Does it? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Oh, dude, this world does not have oh, all. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. Oh no, it's the last chapter. Okay. Mm. <laughs> the entire movie was just Kai's revenge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. Crazy. Fucking crazy. Okay. Chapter 479. Delegation. Luckily for Sunny. Kai was finished with his business soon, and they were able to leave the theater for a more private space. Otherwise, there might have been civilian casualties at the premiere of the Song of Light of Darkness. After that, Dan Ryder had announced Sonny's identity to everyone in the restaurant. The amount of people asking him to say, Are you crazy? to <laughs> their faces almost pushed him to the brink. <laughs> Why did he do it? Oh, no, he didn't say he did it. They just asked. Oh my god, that's crazy. In any case, soon he found himself in a sophisticated lounge in the company of Effie, Kai, and Aiko. Oh. The petite girl looked very sharp in a fashionable business suit and radiated a sense of cold professionalism that made people think twice before approaching laid-back and friendly Kai. Which, Sunny supposed, was a big part of being an idol's manager. When they were seated, the idol in question gave him a guilty look. Well, uh, it wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> Effie smiled at him and said sweetly, Sure, sure. But also, he only the only reason you were still alive is that it would be a, 
ashore to clean the blood of my wheelchair. <laughs> Kai chuckled nervously and glanced at Sunny. What about you? Oh, are you even, are you kidding, dude? Sunny shrugged. I don't mind. Actually, I'm happy to be portrayed as a bumbling fool. Charming Archer blinked. Really? Sunny gave him a serious nod. Of course, it's easier to fool people who think that you're the fool, so I don't mind. Kai looked away in embarrassment. Anyway, you don't have to worry too much, really. These types of films are usually made to boost public moral morale. No one is really going to take them seriously. Sure. Even mundane people understand the difference between reality and fiction when it comes to the awakened. Sunny laughed. Sure. When they want to. He was a mundane person for most of his life too, after all. And even though he grew up in the outskirts, he used to consume sheep entertainment just like everyone else in the waking world. Yes, he knew how to recognize propaganda and what to not take seriously. But at the same time, many things that had nothing to do with the truth found their way into his mind and silently became beliefs. That was how well-engineered falsehoods worked. They spent some time chatting and joking about especially ridiculous moments in the movie. And at the right moment, Sunny said, Are you crazy? <laughs> By the way, I talked to Cassie. She's in. But we'll need to do it before winter, so minus one month for preparations. Effie smiled. Good news! I'll start packing then. I am south of Bastion right now, so it will take me two, three months to get to the Shane Isles? Unless one of you knows a friendly local saint. Sunny thought about St. Tyrus and remained silent. <laughs> yes, she isn't really the friendly local. No, that woman frightened him too much to ask for a favor. He wondered how Master Jet had managed to convince her in the first place. Kai nodded. We can meet in Bastion and travel north together. It will be safer. Aiko, meanwhile, was looking at them with a confused expression on her delicate face. Travel north? Do it before winter? What are you talking about? A guilty expression suddenly appeared on the charming archer's face. That, uh, I haven't mentioned it before, but basically I'm going to join Sunny, Effie, and Cassie to... to challenge the second nightmare? Aiko stared at him with a shocked expression. Not to steal from Sunny, but... <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Have you told the agency? Kai smiled weakly. Not to steal from Sunny, that's... Aiko, you bitch. <laughs> no, I was hoping that you could tell them, actually. They'll listen to you. Isn't it a good thing, really, for public relations? Plus, as a master, I won't have to visit the Dream Realm every day. The petite girl scoffed. If you survive... Then she glanced at Sunny and Effie and shook her head. Oh, who am I kidding? I guess I'll be jobless again soon. You guys have fun for a bit. I'll go get a drink. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> With that, she rose and went toward the bar. Sunny thought for a bit, then rose too. I'll go keep her company. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kai gave him a thankful smile. I appreciate it. What does he think I'm going to do? <laughs> Sunny gave his friend a confused look, then followed Aiko. Of course, he wasn't doing it out of consideration. In fact, he wanted to talk to her about something in private. When he approached the bar and stood near the petite girl, she gave him a dirty look. Whatever it is, no. Hell no. <laughs> Rejected. <laughs> Sunny blinked. Uh, what do you mean? Aiko smiled crookedly. I know that look of yours. The last time you looked at me like that, Steph and I almost ended up as a bloodlord bait. What, do you want me to join your suicide crusade? He shook his head. No, no, nothing of the sort. In fact, it's about your job. I want it. <laughs> the petite girl raised an eyebrow. Oh? Sunny nodded. Well, since there's a possibility of you losing a part of your income, and Kai tells me that you're really good at managing stuff, how would you like to help me manage a blossoming new business? Oh my god. Aiko looked at him with a dubious expression. Are you opening an assassination agency? He almost choked. What? What made you think that? No, I just found a way to move items between the real world and the dream realm. My dream, if you need to know, is to become the pro <laughs> proprietor. 
proprietor of an elite memory store. <laughs> the petite girl stared at him with wide eyes. Really? Sunny frowned. Yes, really. Why, can't I have a dream? Just imagine sitting safely in a fashionably decorated store without having to risk my skin in the dream realm and have tons of money simply flow into my hands. That's the stuff dreams are made of, is it not? Yes. <laughs> Aiko shook her head with a bewildered expression on her face. I guess? Sunny smiled. You understand. The others might think that it's silly, but I know you wouldn't, as a former business owner myself. <laughs> Anyway, I won't have a large enough arsenal of memories for a while, but I can start creating a reputation for the store already. A brand name, or whatever it's called. So I just sold four fallen soul shards. <laughs> so I just sold four fallen soul shards on the network from a devil I killed. And ate. Why did he? Why? Why? But for some reason, that bastard shard did not fetch a really good prize. <laughs> I could look at him with a frown. Well, what category of the vendor license did you apply for? Who's your appraiser? What's your feature strategy? SEO? SEO approach? Pool of endorsements? He remained silent for a bit and said, You see, you said a lot of words and most of them even sound familiar, but I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> this was me. <laughs> this was me. <laughs> When it comes to the stock market, <laughs> this is me. <laughs> what the hell was she talking about? What's a CEO? Wait, what did... Did I not see... Did I say it weird before? Now I'm like, it's a CEO. I didn't say that early. CEO, ah, whatever. What's a CEO? And there... Are there different licenses? Wait, do I even need a license? Don't tell me that I need to pay taxes too. <laughs> The petite girl closed her eyes for a moment. None? You did none of these things? Sunny nodded. It's a miracle that you even managed to sell those shards. He smiled. That's why I need someone smart and resourceful like you to help me. 45% commission of every sale. He was gonna say 10. <laughs> oh, CEO. Oh, I'm sorry, SEO. <laughs> That's why I was like, why? How did... <laughs> So it's like, why am I saying <laughs> sorry? <laughs> yes, SEO, thank you. Yes, <laughs> hello, Scoops. Thank you for the sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hi, <laughs> I was so confused. So was I. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> what a great moment to, <laughs> to enter. <laughs> <laughs> SEO, I meant. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a miracle that I even stream. <sighs> That's why I need someone smart and resourceful like you to help me for 5% commission of every sale. Just think about it. How many awaken out there can bring soul shards to the real world and bring spices to the dream realm? We'll be rich in no time. Aiko sighed and remained silent for a bit. Then she said, That is a high-risk business venture that Wally depends on two unpredictable factors. You staying alive and you continuously hunting down nightmare creatures, which are usually in contradiction to each other. So in normal circumstances, I would have said no. But it is you, I guess. Plus, you have a good relationship with all three of the newest named Awakened, as well as a lot of prestige as a member of Changing Stars cohort, and now even some pop culture fame. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Okay, enjoy signing up for school. Thanks, I guess. I'm so, it's so sudden. I, have... <laughs> I thought you were already in school. I thought you were, you should be done with school. Enjoy school. <laughs> I 
and thank you. <laughs> I will read. Um, Aiko shrugged, thought for a long while, and then said categorically, 10%. I knew she was gonna fucking haggle or whatever the fuck you call it. 10%. Sunny grinned and offered her his hand for a handshake. Perfect! Welcome aboard Sunny's brilliant emporium! Oh my god. The petite girl stared at him in shock. Wait, you actually named the store Brilliant Emporium? Can the naming be changed? He shook his head. No, it's non-negotiable. But what's wrong with that name? It's a great name. I think that it's, you know, brilliant. <laughs> Oh, I love Sunny. I love Sunny. Oh my god. When do I get the Shadow Slave tattoo? <laughs> Mongrel on my arm. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, today was a lot. Today... Get the barking of Shadow God. Yeah. Oh my god. Today was a lot. A lot. A lot. And it was fucking beautiful and I loved everything. Oh. Oh my god, JP, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we will end it there yes thank you all so much for watching today it was highly entertaining as always and thank you everyone for showing up i'm still amazed so many people are doing it and watching and it's insane i can't believe that the first fucking shadow stream shadow stream shadow slave vod i uploaded on youtube has more than 2000 views i think it's 2007 or some shit like that now and it's just fucking going every day and i'm like what the fuck is going on so thank you thank you so much I'm amazed. Yes! Yes! <laughs> so many! It's insane! Thank you, Guilty Three, for this blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and thank all of you for continuing to watch this and being here. It's so nice. I appreciate it so much. And it's extremely funny. And it makes me happy. Thank you for watching this stream. <laughs> <sighs> I will be back whenever I'll be back. Keep you updated as I have been so far. Thank you all so much again. Go follow me on YouTube and Twitch, Instagram if you want to join the Discord because you have to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Check out Guilty Three's Discord as well. It's somewhere. You will find it easily. You probably already are already in it at this point. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Hey, Duo!